really excited about the future. The future has been built, I mean, these kind of things have been going on for, for years. This technology has been developing, kind of crawling along. Is the future here for electrical cars, for this type of technology? Is the future here now? I think, you know, I think we're, we're probably, within the next two years, going to see some dramatic changes in energy storage, which will enable mass consumption of highway-capable vehicles. I think that, that we're, we're on the verge, absolutely on the verge. Um, drive technologies have been around forever, as you know. I mean, the EV1, electric cars, you know, 100 years ago. Uh, there's, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing a whole lot new happening in that space. But, but uh, energy storage, I think, is where the, the major changes are going to occur. Before we get to that subject, and a little more in depth, um, tell me a little bit about the car that you have available today. Sure. We wanted to build an affordable, um, you know, mass production vehicle that would. Uh, would solve the transportation needs of a, a majority of Americans. So this is a low-speed urban neighborhood vehicle. It's a car that has a regulated top speed of 25 miles an hour and can operate on 35 mile an hour roads. So, you know, for instance, yesterday I was driving around all around Berkeley, California, right? And and uh, I was never in a situation where I felt like I was going too slow. In fact, most of the time in all our urban centers, you're sitting in traffic, not moving. So. So the ability to uh, to drive an electric, affordable electric vehicle uh, for urban and neighborhood use is here today. So we're shipping cars now. And you're based in Toronto. We're headquartered in Toronto. We have manufacturing facilities in Montreal, and ironically, ship all our product to the U.S. You know, they're not legal in Canada of all <laughs> of all things. It's a little ridiculous, but uh, we're legal in 45 of the 50 states. And, uh, and we're getting a lot of, a tremendous amount of interest on uh, up and down the West Coast, uh, even in the Midwest. Uh, next month we're launching an air-conditioned version of the vehicle, so we're moving into sort of Florida and the Sun Belt. So yeah, we've, we're, we're optimistic that um, you know we'll get a, we'll just continue to grow within this low-speed market. So electric cars sort of came and went of, of a sort in terms of their support by the big, the big auto companies. It's all changing now, isn't it? The, t the, the current climate, some of these things, it's changing, and, and we're going to. Do you see the, the corner being turned? I think there's a huge consumer tidal shift happening. I think that, you know, I think we've got millions and millions of, of car users today who are just fed up that there are no zero emission options, uh, viable zero emission options on the road. So I think, yeah, I think the pressure is, is starting to build. And I think that, I, but I do think it's going to take the small entrepreneurial companies to kind of push, uh, to push the envelope, to push this to the point where um, either, you know, we as small companies take over the space or uh, in conjunction with the large existing companies, you know, they start to play the game too. Um, but, you know, the jury's out on that. It's going to take, that, that's going to take a few years to really, kind of, to really uh, unfold. You have a, uh, a relationship with a, a quiet little company in Texas that is uh, developing some exciting new technology. Does uh, your relationship with them sort of make you wake up kind of giggling at night sometimes with the, with the possibilities? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, every time I'm stuck in a traffic jam, I, I, I think of, uh, I think of uh, new energy storage technologies and, and the ridiculous way that we use petroleum now. Um, but absolutely, yeah, I think that... Um, uh, when we see the breakthroughs in energy storage, we're going to see mass adoption of electric vehicles. I think the average consumer um, is resistant to technological change, and, and they don't like inconvenience. So you, you really you need an electric vehicle that you know, has the same range as an internal combustion vehicle, costs the same as an internal combustion vehicle, recharges in the same amount of time as it takes to fill a tank of gas, so minutes as opposed to hours, uh, and is affordable. Um, I think at that point, and, and that's all energy storage related, that's not drive system related, it's energy storage. Once we, you know, once we turn that corner, then I think we're at the point where, you know, the average consumer globally will say, hey, I can drive electric and, uh, and I can save the planet at the same time and it's not going to, you know, it's not going to cost me my shirt to do it. You know, I don't have to be a pioneer I can, I can, I, and I don't have to be inconvenienced. Um, what can you tell me about Estor and, the, and their technology developments and, and, and your arrangement? Um, I can tell you what's certainly what's in the public domain. Um, Estor's press release from earlier this year indicated that they would be delivering production units to us by the end of calendar 07. Uh, they appear to be on track for that. 
Um, they haven't hit any huge technological or scientific walls yet with their technology. So we're optimistic. They're a very solid group of people. Um, they've got, uh, you know, they've got an amazing background. They've got, uh, I think they've got, currently have all the money they need to commercialize the product. So they're not beholden to that way. Um, uh, they're very stealth, I guess, to the for the main reason that uh, they're heads down in development of this product. They don't uh, they don't want to be distracted, and uh, and we're very thankful for that. I mean, we're we're extremely excited about about the prospect. We're um, our agreements with them indicate that we will we will have the first production units. Uh, our relationship goes back you know five or six years, and uh, and we were just in very early, you know. And I guess that's we have enjoy a, a great relationship because of that. Can you describe a little bit about what the, exactly their technology is, is attempting to do? Sure, in, in the simplest terms, and I'm not an engineer, so I'm not going to try to get, I'm not, I won't get overly scientific, but it is an ultra-capacitor technology, so it's a, it's a solid-state energy storage device as distinct from a um, chemical. So it's not, it's not a chemical reaction that's happening, it's, it's, really, it's really a solid-state um, electrons basically uh, you know, being absorbed into this, uh, into this uh, storage material. Um, they they've have a very different insulator, um, breakthrough insulator. They've got um, purity levels that have never been achieved um, within uh, the capacitor space. They've got breakdown voltages that have never been achieved. So there's a whole bunch of things. They've, they've kind of taken that technology to the next level and, and, uh, and created a paradigm shift within capacitors. And just on a, on a sort of a consumer level, what will that mean in terms of the difference between what is it here today and what potentially could be in those vehicles? Well, it, that's, that's the point, is, is that, it, um, that their technology kind of eliminates all the barriers. So right now, if you were to drive our electric vehicle with lead-acid battery technology, it takes, you know, six to eight hours to recharge. Um, going to an e-store um, powered um, solid state technology, the ability to charge that vehicle in a couple of minutes exists. So um, because it's not a chemical reaction, it can, it can take a huge amount of energy very, very quickly. Um, the cost uh, is down at, you know, we've got pricing in at around uh, lead acid pricing. So we suddenly have the, the ability to go to a highway capable vehicle that's affordable. Right? You're not looking at a at a $20,000 vehicle with $40,000 worth of batteries in it. You're looking at a $20,000 vehicle that's electric, ready to go. So the, the cost barrier is there. Uh, breaking through the cost barrier is there. Um, and you could fill up while you're having getting your Starbucks. Well, you could fill up getting your Starbucks. You could fill it up overnight. Uh, you could, it, it, it's, it's a battery that can be recharged in so many different ways. And um, it's really up to the consumer as to how they want to, you know, how they want to put electricity back into it. You could hook it up to a windmill and solar panels and recharge it. I mean, if you were truly, you know, truly zero carbon footprint, that's how you would do it. Um, the other thing is uh, cyclability. I mean, they've been doing destructive testing to a million cycles without any degradation. So, you know, chemical batteries wear out. So we're talking about a permanent energy storage device here. Um, well, phenomenal. I'm in the battery business with television in a million cycles. That impresses the crap out of me. I'm Absolutely. Sorry. Absolutely, and, and think of consumer electronics. You know, not just not just our application in transportation, but you think of you know all of the uh, all of the incredible waste of of uh, raw materials that go into chemical battery technology now. So imagine a battery that you know just never dies, right? It's a it's a nice thing to think about. Um, this this uh, could have serious serious impact on the way things are done, the way things are are, are transported, the way we do business. Well. You know, I, I sort of kid and you maybe pause for laughter, but it, I think very much that's the end of uh, it's the end of petroleum as a as a fuel. Electricity is a better fuel. It's a better fuel for the planet. And you know, we're standing here in the sun right now, and there's enough energy hitting this planet, uh, you know, orders of magnitude, ten times more than we need every day. Uh, is you know, it hits us from the sun. And if we have ways of collecting that and storing it, um, that's just uh, that's where we need to be. Um, Eastor, just to put it in perspective, um, you know, they're probably their largest um, applications are things like grid load leveling and renewable energy and the storage of energy, electri electrical energy, and the movement of electrical energy. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the game changer that we need. I mean, energy storage opens up the door for everything that's being discussed at this conference. Absolutely.